Burgess Park cleanup, new art coming to the airport, a groundbreaking for the Centerville Library, and a shipwreck on Forts Beach. This news and more on today's episode of Barnstable Today. It's Friday, September 28, 2012. I'm Sarah Colvin. Well, there's much less brush at Burgess Park now that volunteers have taken the time to clear the popular disc golf course. Barnstable Director of Leisure Services Patty Machado tells us the big effort took place last Saturday in Marcy's Mills. Put some serious muscle into uh, Burgess Park um, all day last Saturday, and there were 21 people out there hauling all the brush out, um, weeding, cleaning out um, the briars and the poison ivy, and I'm sure a lot of them have poison ivy. It was that oh, no. bad. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it was quite a um, quite a daunting task, um, removing trees that were just huge that have been dead and basically are um, a liability out there. And I'm telling you, what an, a phenomenal group of people. We had a 12-year-old um, right up to 60-year-olds out there hauling this brush out of there, and it wasn't a little, it was an all-day event. Um, they started at um, by 9 o'clock, we had already pulled out the first couple of, uh, and they, they used their own vehicles, their own equipment. They used, I mean, it, it wasn't like the town had to provide anything. Um, they did it all. Meanwhile, the Recreation Commission recently toured Barnstable's numerous recreation areas and is working on crafting a report. They'll soon release their findings to the public. Machado says there are key places in town that she expects will get some TLC in the near future. They'll have their report done. On th there's quite a few that need um, some serious um, work. One being Craigville Beach is, I believe, I'm not speaking out of term to say that that's their number one priority. Um, they, they are a little bit uh, taken back by the um, facilities, um, the shovel and the unsafe conditions, and the, the real. They had real concerns about um, Craigville as number one. Um, the, the, there's many ball fields. Um, there, there are many playgrounds. Um, the, there's there's a long list. I mean, we toured over 80 um, recreation facilities and school facilities that are used by the Recreation Division, um, and they'll be doing an evaluation um, that should be out by next week. Um, they're meeting on Monday to go over um, their findings, um, putting it together, and um, they'll have that available to the town manager, um, and then we're going to go from there. And um, you know, they should be applauded for for the time and the effort that they put in. Um, but putting even putting this. Um, report together. Uh, you know, everybody has their, their spots, but they, they really are concerned and, and caring about each village in the town of Barnes. Local artist work now hangs in the brand new terminal at Barnesville Municipal Airport. This November, 11 new artists will get to showcase their work at the terminal. At this week's Airport Commission meeting, the Art Task Force provided an update on new artists' works. The delivery of the new works of art will come in early November. Uh, it will be installed on November 9th, and we're thinking very seriously of having a press release um, in November and then having a reception on November 15th from like 5.30 to 7.30 with, with the artists uh, and obviously uh, the airport commission and a few other people. The task force says that sculpture will be a part of the new display. This airport lends itself beautifully for sculpture, particularly in the central part of the terminal. Uh, and then on the east end, particularly where all that glass is. Um, so unfortunately, we only had about six submissions of sculptures back uh, last year, or I'm sorry, in January of this year. Um, we selected four of those, and we will install those in January. We still want to work with some of the sculptors uh, one of them would be suitable to go outside if we want to do that. Uh, the other three would have to be inside, but we are going to do a little bit more work and probably we'll have a, a subsequent meeting, but we're very excited about being able to uh, start to have sculpture in this building. The Airport Commission met in the Airport Conference Room on Tuesday afternoon. You can watch the whole meeting online at town.barnstable.ma.us. Well, ground will break for improvements to the Centerville Library next week as ceremonies planned at the library on Wednesday, October 3rd. 4,800 square feet will be added, a new elevator, handicapped accessible restrooms, and a new stairway design will all be part of the new 12,000 square foot library. The groundbreaking ceremony takes place at 4 o'clock on Wednesday at the library. That's 585 Main Street in Centerville. Well, if you've got unused, unwanted, or expired prescription drugs lurking in your medicine cabinet, don't flush them down the toilet or throw them in the trash. 
they could cause harm to the environment. Instead, drop them off at the Barnesville Police Department tomorrow. It's National Drug Take Back Day. It takes place from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Drug drop off is anonymous. No questions are asked and there are no forms to fill out. Call the police department for further information. Well, this week, the Zoning Board of Appeals gave the nod to a cellular company to add antennas to a pair of towers in town. Metro PCS was before the board on Wednesday, asking to add two microwave dish antennas to a model pole at 1047 Falmouth Road and to add four dish antennas to a communications tower on Oak Street. Actually, we were, as a non-conforming, we replaced somebody on, on the uh, Oak Street property. Uh, to amend the special permits and variances in order to place um, two and four microwave dishes on these towers, respectively. <clears throat> the uh, dishes are um, there for just telephone use. It's um, part of a, a network that Metro PCS is setting up throughout different uh, municipalities in the in, um, down in Cape Cod area and throughout part of Massachusetts, parts of Massachusetts. The effort is part of a Metro PCS project to boost communication signals in the area. Well, water protection is a key issue here on Cape. Town Council President Fred Chirigoda says it's an area of concern that will likely be tackled by councillors in the coming year. Um, there was an interesting article I read the other day by a realtor on Cape who talked about Cape Cod is all about the water. The reason people live here and the reason people come here is because we have beautiful beaches, we have great um, seafood, we have people want to use the water for swimming, recreation, sailing, boating, um, you name it, and we have great clean water. So there's a real um, need. We have, you know, and, and, and actually the article was pretty good because it said something which I, I think everybody agrees with, is we've believed for many years people believe that Title V was the solution when we realize now that Actually, Title V is the problem. Um, Title V septic systems do not remove um, the, the worst contaminants that are going into our water stream, and we need to figure out a way to remove um, a whole host of things, chemicals and other things, you know, the, we, um, emerging contaminants, they're called. There's a whole host of things that go, go into the uh, septic systems that get into the water stream that really affect our lives, um, that we need to figure out a way to remove them so that our water is um, clean and safe. Next Thursday, the Silent Spring organization is holding a pair of informational sessions in town. One starts at the Senior Center at 930, the second at Town Hall at noon. Silent Spring will present details of its scientific studies of emerging contaminants in the Cape's groundwater supply. Well, what may be the remains of a shipwreck emerged from the waters of Hyannis Port. Local resident and recreational diver Max Kennedy had been diving near the wreck. It appears a portion was dragged up onto the shore of Forts Beach last Saturday. A local towing company was called to haul the wooden pieces away. It's now expected the artifacts will be examined to determine age and any historical significance. We, of course, will keep you updated as we get more details. With Barnstable Today, I'm Sarah Coleman.